spirituality is like sci-fi because they believe in all these aliens. Even I was at this meditation conference, this guy Donald Hoffman came. He believes that the whole world is a simulation and we're making the whole world up in our minds. And he's a legit scientist. Yeah, he's a scientist. And here's the crazy thing. The meditation world and this world, they are colliding. They're in a head on collision because the meditation people are like studying the mind or whatever. And they all believe in this simulation thing. They actually think that we're being channeled teachings from other dimensions. I don't know what to tell you. They warned about this thing called Neo Advaita. They were like, it could be dangerous. It's like this spiritual teaching. Be careful of this spiritual teaching because they all believe in Advaita, which is like this Hindu like teaching meditation teaching. But they're like, don't do Neo Advaita because Neo Advaita is, it has been known that they are abusive and they are doing some kind of brainwash trickery, something. I was going to say, this this is one of the guys who was, who was presenting at the conference I just did. Donald Hoffman. Look at, look at his videos. Nothing you see is real. Donald Hoffman proves that we live in a simulation. That's it. Let's watch it together. In fact, doesn't even exist unless I render it, right? So if you're playing Grand Theft Auto, I'm playing a VR version of, I got the steering wheel in front of me. I'm holding the steering wheel. If I look to the side, I no longer render the steering wheel and there is no steering wheel. When I look here, I... This is the classic, like, you know, that there's a Zen koan that if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's there to hear it, did it make a sound? And the answer is no, because sound is an experience. So if there's no one to experience sound, then sound did not exist just like this. But this guy proved it. Render it and now there is a string. The same thing is true, strictly speaking, of neurons and brains. They're there when you render them. They're not there when you don't. It's a VR system that you render objects in space and time as you need them because they're part of your visualization tool and then you garbage collect them you delete them when you don't need them your life and my life right now is we're in a simulator a space-time simulator holy sh we've been given like an ai system we've been given certain intrinsic desires this guy's a legit scientist don't say any goddamn disrespectful messages in the comments he's a legit scientist so my wife is an artist so there's billions of humans and there are billions of different ways that we explore in music, in art, in literature, in science, various kinds of science. So we're at sports. There, there are all sorts of Capuera. ways that consciousness is exploring through us. And there is not like one is the best. I don't know what we're doing outside of space and time. That's part of what I want to understand is what are we actually doing? We don't see, I don't know what I'm actually doing. I know what I'm doing under a description. I, like I'm moving my hand right now. And if I grab a steering wheel in my car, I know what I'm doing under a space time. I want to know what they're doing. I'm description, but I don't know in ultimate reality what I'm really doing. <laughs> it's just like the VR player. When they turn the steering wheel in Grand Theft Auto, they know what they're doing in the language of the game. I'm turning a steering wheel. But what they're really doing in terms of the supercomputer, right, which in that metaphor would be the deeper reality, they're toggling voltages and magnetic fields and circuits that they have no idea. There's, there's probably trillions of voltage toggling's going on for one turn of the wheel. All they wow. see is a turn of the wheel. That's their notion of cause and effect. It's trivial. The real cause and effect is trillions of voltages getting toggled in wow. fractions of a second. Wow. It's much, much more complicated. So when I talk evolution. This guy rips, right? I talk to him. I'm only going to be talking about assuming the headset. I'm within the framework of the headset because evolutionary theory is only a headset theory. It's not a theory of consciousness beyond space and time. God is great. Wow. This is what they've been saying, that all science is just physical world. As soon as you get to the quantum level, and I think someone was saying this in the conference, that like when you get smaller than 10 to the negative four meters, all science is garbage. Consciousness is like a kid in a candy store. It's a never-ending exploration that is, in principle, never-ending. We call Tom and Don are just parts of this overall exploration of, of consciousness wow. and all of its possibilities. Our little bit that we're exploring right now, um, as rich as it seems to us, is trivial compared to all the possibilities that Girdle says are out there. I can imagine a, I can imagine a cube. Now, go up one more dimension. Imagine a cube in four dimensions. Can't do it. My brain halts and my mind catches on fire. Nothing happens. That's only four dimensions. I can't even go to four dimensions. I mean, how? That, that, that's terrible. It's, it's just an incredible limitation. I can only see three dimensions of color, red, green dimension, blue, yellow, and, and so forth. There are some pigeons that have four color receptors. Presumably they're in an extra dimension of color 
that I can't even imagine what it's like. What the f Honestly, I think blind people are enlightened because blind people might be on top of their sh more than us because think about how much we're attached extra to the world because we can see sh As rich as our world seem, we know that there's a rich possibility of conscious experiences that we can't even concretely imagine. But consciousness itself, on this theory, is exploring all these possibilities. And right now we're sort of stuck on this little headset. Three dimensions, small amount of color that we can see and so forth. Just, it, I mean, we thought it was the whole world. No, it's just, it's a little headset. It's a, it's a prism. My imagination is stuck in only three dimensions. My colors are stuck in a certain range. Now here's the challenge. Suppose we chase that down. So we say, okay, there's going to be this ongoing dynamics of consciousness constantly going beyond what it knows. But there's going to be a, a, a dark side to it because going into the unknown means letting go of what you know. And that can be terrifying. Where literally you don't have concepts. All of your current concepts, for those who meditate, I mean, when you go into silence, it's both healing and terrifying. If you really let go of all thoughts and go into the void, it's, it's sort of, it can be scary. Like you want to go back into, you, you grab back onto your, it's a life jacket, right? You're, you grab onto your teddy bear, your thoughts. How would consciousness precisely, this, this vast social network project mathematically into space time? Clearly there's a projection. I'm interacting with Tom's consciousness. I'm not seeing that consciousness. I'm seeing skin, hair, and eyes. I'm seeing a space-time projection. I'm not actually seeing your emotions. I'm not seeing your mood, but I am genuinely interacting with your experiences. It's a genuine interaction. And so there is a projection from this conscious realm into space-time. We can take what we understand in the headset and pull it backwards. If we can project from consciousness to the headset, then we can try at least to go from the headset and pull backwards. It's, it's, it's a fallible enterprise, but it may help us to open our mind to the possibilities for deeper theories of what's going on outside the headset. So, so the reason I'm doing this is because I, I can't even imagine a specific color that I've never seen before. I can't imagine in four dimensions. In other words, I take it as a given that I'm deeply, deeply limited in my imagination. And I need all the tools I can get to help me step outside of my headset and try to guess the unfathomable outside of it. And the moral of the story is, you are loved because you are loved. Such is the nature of love and kindness. Okay? So now that I've done my karmas, make sure you do your karmas. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and sign up for meditation. Ascension is upon us, foolish. Sign up for meditation immediately. Ha! Am I still here? F